Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. and welcome back to another garden video. So today I am going to be doing a few things in the raised beds that are on my to-do list. I need to tie up the watermelon and the cucumber a little more so that they can start growing up on the actual teepees. You can see where I did that with this guy. And once you start them, the tendrils will wrap on and do the work, but you have to keep them headed up that way or they're just going to try to lay on the ground. So adding a little bit of string to those will help. It might start storming, in which case we'll have to run inside. Then I want to add a little bit more drip. We have the squares, but I need to add two strips down of the two middle portions of the outside beds. I also need to uh, kind of redirect some strawberry runners that have developed away from the mother plant into a new location. And I need to kill my potatoes because I've left it way too long. It may be too late. I've never grown potatoes, but I should have done it like a week and a half ago. So we're going to get started with tying these veggies up. And we're just going to see how fast we can go. It wasn't supposed to rain today. All right, y'all, so we started with the vining plants. And you can see that we went ahead and we just helped tie them up so that they can start to grow up on their own. Now the watermelon tend to need more help than the cucumber. You can see here, the watermelon have a little itty bitty tendrils. See this one's trying to grab onto this mulch. And so we'll continue to tie him up. The, any watermelon that start to form and need help, we can make little slings for. Look at this baby. Out of some pantyhose or stretchy material as they grow so that they don't break the trellis or fall and break this vine before they are fully mature. On the other hand, the cucumber has long tendrils and you can see that they do start grabbing on to everything and will literally climb this trellis by themselves if you kind of just guide them up a little bit so that is good then we did go ahead and we ran two more drip tubes down the center of these middle beds i would have done this at the beginning but I ran out of drip tube, I had to go get some more. So I've been having to hand water these four middle squares. So now they will be fully automatic, which is great. And then we worked on our strawberry runners. So you can see strawberries put off runners with these long tendrils and you can put them in a spot you want, put them in with a landscape staple and they will eventually root in. So see this one we did first this little guy, and he is now rooted in. Once he is fully rooted, like this guy, where he's starting to put off flowers and create berries, we can cut the tendril or the leader from the mother plant 
and it will be fully self-sufficient, a brand new strawberry plant. And that is the best way to go from eight plants to 16. We've already done in the last month. We went from our eight original plants that I bought to 16, which is great because strawberry plants for one square foot, which is one of these squares, you need four plants for the ideal spacing. And that gets expensive. Eight plants was about $50. So to fill a whole bed, eventually I'd like this whole bed to be strawberries. That's a lot of plants. Also, if you're fully using, you know, plants and runners, say this year we did this row, next year we do the row next to it. Strawberry plants have a life of three to four years. So if we fully just work our way across the bed, by the time we reach the end, we'll be able to start over at the beginning and we'll always have plants that are in their first year, second year, third year, fourth year, second and third year, they produce the most, not as much the first and fourth year. So it kind of will cycle through them and we'll always have at least two rows that are fully producing lots of strawberries. I do think eventually I'm going to have to build kind of a cage for the top of this as it fills with strawberries to keep birds away. I think I'm going to do some decoy rocks this year because the berries are just starting to come. And once the birds find them, we won't have any left if we let them at them. So eventually, chicken wire across the top. The last thing we did was hill our potatoes, which you can see even with a three or four inch hill on top, there's still green coming out the top. So we should have done this last week. But first year doing potatoes and we will just see what happens. We also did across here and we are all set. That was everything I wanted to get done in the raised beds today. Thank goodness because it has literally like been thundering and lightning this whole time. So I don't know when, don't know why, but I think it's going to rain and I'm not gonna argue with it. Anytime it wants to rain, I'll take it. But I'm gonna go inside with my supplies before that happens cause I uh, don't wanna get caught in it, so. If you liked this video, you may want to go back to the beginning. I have a whole playlist of building the raised beds, installing the shed, starting this whole area. You can still see I need to do compost or pea gravel on the ground, but it's coming together, y'all. I'm very excited for this area. And this was just one more thing to work on out here. So glad we got it done. You can catch out that playlist here and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.